Let's explore this problem. It asks us to determine taxable income and we have to use Schedule M1 from a Form 1120. Okay, the following information is for the 2014 Sparrow Corporation results. And Sparrow Corporation is a calendar year accrual-based taxpayer. So here's what we know. To the left of my mouse there, you can see the net income per books is $174,100. The federal income tax expense per the books is $86,600. Tax-exempt interest is $4,500. And maker's depreciation and excess of straight-line depreciation used for financial statement purposes was $7,200. Now, the excess of capital loss over capital gains was $9,400. There was a non-deductible meals and entertainment amount of $5,500 that we see on Sparrow's books, and interest on a loan to purchase tax-exempt bonds was $1,100. Now, based on that information, we're to use Schedule M1 on Form 1120, um, and we're going to determine Sparrow's taxable income for 2014. Okay, now I've realigned the screen so that we still have the base information here, although it's a lot smaller. And here's how we would tackle this one. We'd start off with net income per books. That was the 174100 And then we have to add in items that would, that would decrease net income per the books, but do not affect taxable income. Okay? And the federal income tax expense per books would be the first item we would list. And then we need to also add in the excess of capital loss over the capital gains, add the interest paid on the loan incurred to purchase tax-exempt bonds, and add in non-deductible meals and entertainment. That will give us a subtotal amount, and then we need to subtract out items that increase net income per books but didn't affect the taxable income. And those items would be the 4500 of the tax-exempt interest income, and then, and then the excess of makers over book depreciation. Okay, and once we have all this information um, um, listed as what needs to be added and subtracted, we can derive taxable income, and that's what they've asked us to do on this problem.